Hello, all my beautiful Cinnabar moths or any kind of moth you'd like to be. Welcome to the Writer's Triangle, a podcast about all things publishing and books. And today I'm going to be talking about the benefits of having an ebook and the benefits of having a print book and why I think every author should do ebook, print book, and that's hard copy and paperback and the benefits of doing each and the cost of doing each because I think that there's this sort of messaging out there that doing print books are way more expensive than doing ebooks. And I find that they are marginally more expensive, but I don't think they're way more expensive. And I think that for, from my experience that there's so much information out there on um, Kindle books and how to do like Kindle Unlimited and that's by design, right? Amazon's a huge company and they do have the absolute largest share of, you know, the book market. But they're not the only, you know, company out there that, that does ebooks and we actually sell more ebooks through Smashwords than we do through Amazon, which I find to be interesting and I don't quite understand um, the the marketing team has all of the hard numbers. I haven't done a deep dive on why I'm just happy to be selling books kind of thing. Um, and I think my, my supposition about it, and again, I haven't done any research on it, is because we don't do Kindle Unlimited. We put one book on Kindle Unlimited and, and got zero page reads. And so for us, that just felt like, okay, maybe this isn't the right way for us to go. And some of our books we just wouldn't want on Kindle Unlimited. You, y'all know we do tons of series. And so for me, putting a series on Kindle Unlimited doesn't feel like the best way to go for us at this time. Um, I'm recording this in 2023. And of course, it may change in the future. But for now, we're not doing Kindle Unlimited. And we're not doing um, free books. And we're not doing 99 cent books. And I find that doing... Kindle Unlimited or Kindle Plus and doing those kinds of deals and specials work really well for some authors and not so well for other authors. And I think by just doing Kindle that you're really limiting your reach. Um, for example, Barnes & Noble has Nook books and we do sell some Nook books through Barnes & Noble. But again, we sell most of our books through Smashwords. And I think it, it's really worthwhile to look into Smashwords and think about putting your book up there. Um, for EPUBs and I also think it's really worthwhile to look at you know Barnes and Noble notebooks and look at some of the other ebook distributors if you are just doing electronic books um, and I think also that not everybody has Kindle ready devices which we've discovered because we do a lot of giveaways as part of our promotions um, and you can check out our marketing um, episode if you want to know all the different promotions that we do and the reason that we give away books is because we want reviews. And so having other formats, like having a PDF, having um, a EPUB file, and for some people having a MOB is, is helpful. We don't use that format because we find it to be a little bit outdated. So when it comes to promoting books, it's helpful to have, you know, a PDF and to have that EPUB. And because you need to have the PDF anyways, there's a lot of stuff that goes into creating um, an EPUB book and creating um, a print book PDF that it really lends itself to having the book be printable. And before I go into like all of the, the cost of, of printing a book and what <clears throat> what it takes to have a good print book out there. The services that I'm most aware of for uh, printing book and it's print on demand are Amazon and Ingram Sparks. And I'll put a link to an Ingram Sparks article that I find the, the I just want to say the price ranges for some things feel a little out of pocket for me. It's not what um, we pay for it. And it's not what when we're talking to authors in the self publishing space, what they're paying for things but it does give a breakdown on, on how to do it and all the things that you need to do. And then I'll also put a link in the description for Amazon Print On Demand. And what Print On Demand basically is, is that they only print the books that are ordered. So you don't send out a bunch of, of books to bookstores and uh, distribution hubs and such. They don't have a stock of your books they only print the books once an order is placed and the books have been paid for. And that helps authors fight costs like when you 
when you do large batch printing and large batch printing um i think the smallest batch that i'm aware of is a hundred books and then it goes up from there small batch and large batch printing is where you pay for the books to be printed and then you ship them out to a bookstore or to a warehouse or the the printing press may offer storage and then you keep the the books in storage and ship them out when order as orders come in or you ship them you um talk with different booksellers and work out deals where you have return policies and that is okay we'll ship you let's say 50 books 50 copies of our title and if it doesn't sell within a year if all 50 copies don't sell within a year you can return them to us and with doing that you have to pay the return fees and you have to pay the storage fees for those books once they're returned or before they ship out. So some places do do small and large batch printing. Some places do print on demand. We do a mix of different printing options because we're sold on, on every continent uh, in the world except Antarctica, which I'm super happy about. And each region has their own preferences and likes of what they prefer that you do and what's most economical based on the area so for some areas small batch printing is better for some areas large batch printing is better and for some print on demand is better and i'm not going to go into what we found by region for us because going to conferences and such and talking to other book publishers they haven't found the same thing so there's no universal to say we know for sure like for example in california large batch batch printing would be the right choice for you because we find differences for genres differences for authors and differences based on how the author moves to the world in different regions and what they're doing in those areas to create buzz and we find that for us so i'll give a little bit and we find that for us uh hometown small batch printing usually works out out pretty well and we're usually able to sell all of those books in the author's region but that hasn't been consistently true even for some authors that are like on the go and really hustling and creating a lot a lot of opportunities to promote their book um and we're able to create a lot of opportunities for them to promote their book in that area as well we're not finding that there's any consistent rule where we're batting a thousand on on anything that we do and so that's why i'm a little bit hesitant to say that for certain you should do any specific thing because this, you know, I say it almost every time I'm on the mic, but this really is a love letter to authors, and I don't want to be hard baking in something that's going to cost authors a lot of money. Because those book returns, you have to pay for the books to be shipped to the bookstores. You have to pay for them to be printed. And then if they don't sell, you do have to pay for those books to be returned. And then you do have to pay for those books to be stored after they're returned. And I think that's why some places are doing those 99 cents for, for paperback and giving away a lot of the paperback and hardback books because there are having those returns. And when we're conferencing and, and talking with other publishing houses, that's where we're finding that a lot of them are doing it. Then just, okay, let's just go and do like a huge sale for this book and write it off. And we tend to not write off any of our books. So we, we tend to like hang tough and, and say, no, we really want to make sure all of these books are full price. A benefit of having a print book is that we do we are able to benefit from Amazon's ability to buy batches and then really heavily discount them. Amazon will sometimes lose money on books. Um, it's part of their business model, and that's how they keep a larger slice of the market is that they just sell cheaper than anyone else can sell. And often the at the price that they sell it, it's cheaper than what we can offer the books for. Um, and that's whether or not we print with Amazon or not. I do find that when we print with Amazon, that they do tend to promote those books more and they do tend to, to give better sales and better discounts and, and such. And I think that's because of the options that they have in terms of their printing capacity. One of the drawbacks of printing with Amazon is that if you print with them, as soon as they have all of the files that go into creating the book, they just put it up and there's no pre-sale. So our method is that we only print 
through Amazon. We only make it available through printing with Amazon once the book has gone live so that we can have that pre-sale time where the book is being pre-ordered and that we can stick to our publication date. And for us, it's rather serious that we stick to our publication date because the Library of, of Congress, all of our books are listed in the Library of Congress. And once they get a Library of Congress number, they're locked into a specific publication date. And we want to make really sure that we're not messing with that at all. Um, but we do think that it's, it's really important to offer through Amazon because we've just noticed that increase in sales, right? And that that's what it's all about. It's increasing sales and making sure that your book sells. So looking at doing like an Ingram Spark or doing like pub, uh, printing through Amazon, there are some additional costs, but I, I hope that they're not too additional and that it are it is things that you are doing. One of the things that, that they list on all of the, the print on demand and all of the, the book publishing sites that I don't agree with is the cost for manuscript critiques. And we did a whole episode on beta reads and I find that you can get beta reads for free. And if you, you know, go check out that episode and I give all the details on how to do that. And so you shouldn't be paying for any sort of beta read or manuscript critique or, um, any sort of just like basic review or sensitivity read, I think for the most part, you can find those for free. There are readers who are voracious readers and they love free books and they'll be willing to do it for that because it can be really expensive. It can be as cheap as, you know, $5 if you do, if you go on Fiverr to as expensive to over $2,000 if you go through a professional site and I haven't found, we, we have tested those professional sites and to be honest, I didn't find any benefit. Um, we have a form that we give all of our beta readers and I found that our free beta reads are usually better than our paid ones actually. And so I really heavily encourage people not to pay for them. Go check out that episode and get into getting those free beta reads and those free sensitivity reads because I think that anything we can do to lower the cost of, of being an author is really important. Something that we take care of for our authors, I just want to make accessible to all of those indie authors out there and to other small presses if you're checking out, you know, our 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 podcast. And I hope that you are and I hope that you're finding benefit for it. So I think as, as other small presses do really well, we're a micro press. If other micro presses, small presses and indie presses are, are doing all the stuff that we're doing, we kind of create an industry standard for what a small press can deliver and the quality that we can deliver. And I humble brag, our quality is the same as the big five. We have a list of what they do for marketing and we're able to do all of the same things that they do. The flip side of it is that we don't have the clout that they have, so we can't add the pressure. So there's a slight difference, but we're mostly the same, I feel, in my humble opinion. But, you know, I love our press, and I think we're amazing. And um, I think if you have a press, you should think you're amazing. And, yeah, so that's my, my little rant on how awesome we are. So when you're doing the – I feel like for EPUBs and print books, I think that a false divide has been created – um, and I think that for some people with ebooks, if you're just doing ebooks, if you're just doing Kindle books, the vibe out there is that those books aren't edited. And I hope that everyone is editing their books and, you know, join a critique circle and you can get edits for fairly reasonably priced. Edits can cost as much as, you know, $5,000 a book. Um, we've never paid that much for editing, but we're fortunate enough that we have an in-house editor. So we have an in-house typesetter and we have an in-house artist that we work with and that keeps our, our costs really reasonable. Um, and I find that, you know, if you do a book cover for an EPUB, if you're doing um, Amazon or Ingram, or I think that I want to say Barnes & Noble might be doing publishing, but I haven't looked that up. My apologies. They do offer any place that's going to print, and I know Smashwords offers a template for you to put the artwork into, so you don't have to guess on how to size it and all of that. And anybody who knows how to create um, a cover can figure out the templates because they do come with markings and measurements for you to be able to, to check it. We're very fortunate. Our artist takes care of all of that. Shout out to Ira. She's just a fantastic artist, and I'll put 
their link in the bio as well because they're amazing. Um, we have first dibs, but I think that they may have some space on the roster. You should absolutely check them out. They're super professional, and I think they're reasonably priced. There are in-house um, artists, and of course, we encourage, you know, we're never interfering with anybody getting their bag. So we'd love it if, if more people would work with art because they're just absolutely amazing. And it really is nice because a lot goes into the cover. Check out our episode on covers if you want to know everything that goes into a cover and something to consider when you're looking at a cover artist. So when you're doing an EPUB or a print book, you, you have to have typesetting where somebody is making sure that your book aligns with industry standards and wherever you're going to upload it to, that that EPUB meets the conventions of what an EPUB is supposed to look like. And if somebody is already typesetting your EPUB, then it's not that, that far of a stretch to go ahead and typeset for paperback and hardback. And typesetting for paperback and hardback is a little bit different. All three of those books have different trim sizes. And trim size is just the size of the book. And the trim size determines how thick a book is going to be because that's how many words that you're going to put on the page. And the trim is the space between the last word and the edge of the page. So determining how many, what's the, the measurements and all of that, if you look into like an Ingram Sparks or an Amazon, they have set um, sizes that they recommend that your books be for paperback and hardback. So you don't have to guess. You can actually go in and look and know what you should be typesetting for. And I think that they also offer typesetting templates. We have a typesetter and they take care of all of that. So I've never personally typeset a book. Um, from what I understand in talking with our typesetter, they said it takes when you're, I did talk to them for this episode and they said when they were learning how to typeset that it was pretty um, intensive in that it took about 40 hours for them to get good with all of the different ways to typeset. But what that 40 hours investment did is that it, it saves, it would save you if you put that time in and it might not take you 40 hours, right? Because you're not dealing with doing a wide range of books because they're a professional typesetter and they typeset all of our books and all of our books have different lengths, different genres, um, and different different typesetting needs in terms of some books have artwork in, inside of them um, and some books don't. Some books have a unique symbol for different scene breaks, other books don't. So making all of those decisions for your books and knowing what they're going to be and creating a standard for them. I was talking with the, the typesetter and they said then it's like 30 to 40 minutes to typeset a book. And I think that upfront investment, it may be a lot, but again, if you look at, um, check out our episode on being a professional author, I talk about, um, how much time it takes and the, the different types of, of things that you're doing and that you need to do. And I think if you're writing a book and you're in the writing process now, my hope would be is that one day could be spent on doing business and, and, you know, attending to things that are in on the business side of it. So you do need to have a uh, different measurements on the cover for a hardback for a paperback and for an EPUB um, editing, you have to do that if you have an EPUB. Um, a manuscript critique, you have to do that even if you have an EPUB. And the you know line edit and comprehensive editing, you have to do that even if you have an EPUB. So I don't find that those things are more expensive. I do think that for book formatting and such that you can you can find some typesetters who would do if you want to pay someone to do it. You can go on Fiverr and find people as cheap as, I wanna say $100 um, all told, and it can you know, go up to thousands of dollars depending on what level you're doing and how many bells and whistles that you want to include in it. And those are things like, do you want to have individual symbols or any artwork included? Those things are a little bit trickier to typeset and that will make it more expensive. Um, for us, it's not more expensive. It's a, the same price for all of our books because we're doing it in-house. Um, but that is something to think about how much style you want your book to have and what is value added. 
and looking at, you know, thinking about the, the typesetters um, or formatters, you know, level of experience, what other books have they've done, that does require a little bit of research. And so, you know, doing it yourself, you're looking at anywhere from a 20 to 40 hour time investment to learn how to do it. Or you can hire someone else, and I think you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 20 hours of research. I advise everyone to research and look at their, their previous work to make sure they know what they're doing. Another huge downside to doing something like Fiverr, where you're not doing it through a company where you're saving money, is that they tend to not always deliver on time, and sometimes people will bail on projects. So that is something to consider. Looking at cover costs, formatting, and all of that, I think the the price bump can be anywhere from a three hundred dollar price bump to do paperback and and hardcover to a three thousand dollar price bump, and it just depends on what you're looking for and, and what you get for free. So definitely, you know, check out our other episodes and see how to to bring the price down on on things and get things for free or for exchanges, and that will help really bring the price down and then looking at when you're looking at at cover artists look and see what formats do they do and how much do they charge per format um some cover artists just charge a straight fee for all three formats and that you get all three formats um and other cover artists have a breakdown by by what cover type and ebooks are the least expensive because the templates are are pretty it's pretty much just a square and one size fits all or a rectangle rather and one size pretty much fits all if you're just doing Amazon um and I think Amazon and Smashwords I want to say have the same uh EPUB cover dimension so if you're doing Amazon it really you really should be doing Smashwords as well because it's all the same process and I'll put a link to Smashwords down in the description and of course to Amazon and to Ingram so that you can go check those out and you know do your own research and, and make the, the best choice for you. I want to talk a little bit about what having a physical book gets you that having an EPUB, an EPUB doesn't. And with EPUBs, you can absolutely do, you know, Goodreads giveaways. You can absolutely do library things giveaways. You can upload to Book Sirens and NetGalley and all of those types of things. But what you can't do is you cannot get industry reviews it's harder if you know people it's a little bit easier but i find that it's much harder to get industry reviews if you're not sending out a physical book um three to four months before the publication date and i've i've talked with some indie authors about this and when they ask me like what can can they do to improve the return and improve the responses and i tell them even if you just uploaded for just doing industry reviews which I wouldn't see why you would limit yourself to just that because I know with Ingram Sparks um, you can get into Barnes and Noble and you can get into Walmart and be listed on their website because they have really great distribution so that's another added benefit to having print books is that you'll be listed on these different like very large distribution uh, booksellers websites and they also have good distribution and good rates for for indie bookstores as well so that's the an added benefit in addition to having the ability to send out copies for industry reviews and also for awards there are some awards that will accept ebooks and there are some awards that only accept ebooks the majority of awards that at least that we send our books out for require that we send physical copies of the books and that we send, uh, I think, anywhere between five and ten physical copies of the book. And for us, having those books available and being able to send them out, I find that it it actually increases the number of reviews our books get, even if they don't win the awards, but it absolutely improves increases the awards and we've we've been very fortunate that we have you know quite a few of our books have received you know honorable mentions and awards and I think that's because of the amount of awards that we're able to submit our books to 
and that gets your that helps with creating familiarity in the industry and creating um a perception on the professional side of things of who you are as an author and are you a professional author with all of the bells and whistles and i know it's completely unfair to break up authors in this way i don't agree with it but the industry is the industry and sadly i don't control it and i can't help but if that there just is a certain view on if you are able to do physical books versus if you're just doing ebooks on where you're at in terms of your level as an author which i don't think it tells me anything other than your preference and time commitment that you that you put into um, promoting your book and how you decided to distribute the book i feel that epubs are a a shorter time commitment and i do keep in mind that it takes seven to ten books for an author to be able to make a living off of royalties and then it's a very paltry living it's not you know good money you know it's, it's really rare that an author is making good money off of books to where they can just be an author full-time and not work another full-time job so for me, I don't feel like it tells me anything about the quality of a book, the format that it's in. However, the industry views it as, you know, seriousness and commitment and whether or not they can trust you as an author. And that's a lot of reviews and a lot of reviewers and a lot of um, awards do have this bias against EPUBs. And it, it bums me out. I think it's unfair and I think a lot of books are are being missed a lot of really great books are being missed that are just on the the epub format that are absolutely award worthy but you know i don't control that so that's that's my 50 cents on it doing in addition to all of like the typesetting and covers and all of that there is a slight increase in cost um in terms of the setup um for ingram sparks i think it's 50 dollars a, a book so it's 50 dollars if you're doing uh hardback and $50 if you're doing soft cover and with Amazon I don't know the off the top of my head I think it's like $25 I think it's a little bit cheaper um, with Amazon there is something to note that sometimes Amazon will say that they're going to set prices and make sure that you're reading all of the fine print um, with Amazon. Amazon doesn't set prices for us, but we're a press. And so it might be a little bit different um, if you're doing it as an individual. They might do it. They might say that, okay, we're going to set your prices. And then consider for yourself if, if that's the way to go. I know that I think Smashwords suggest prices. And I think Ingram suggests prices. I don't know for sure. Um, but make sure that you're reading the contracts and reading all of all of the fine prints. So this is just really the broad strokes of why I think that you should absolutely do paperback and hardback and EPUBs for your book. I just think there's so much, so many more benefits, and I also think that there's so many more opportunities if you do all three formats. And I feel like if you're gonna cut one, I would say cut hardbacks. Um, do EPUBs and, and paperbacks because you don't have to send uh, hardcovers. Um, we don't, at least we don't send any hardcovers to those industry reviewers like Forwards Reviews and, and Blue Ink Review. And uh, the US library system has their reviews that they do. And, you know, like US Day, USA Today, New York Times, and all of that. If you're sending out your books to be reviewed by them, you absolutely need to send them a paperback. So I do think it would be worthwhile to do EPUBs and paperbacks. So that's my big sell for all authors to do EPUBs and paperbacks. And I would say, you know, think about doing the hardbacks as well. I just love listing hardbacks. <laughs> I just love when I see a book is, is in hardbacks, I have like a soft space in my heart. And I know this is not the most environmentally friendly thing to do, but we're looking at, you know, getting your books out there and selling your books and promoting yourself as an author. If you have a hard stance because of the environmental impact of, of publishing books, I completely understand. I wish that, you know, we could say that, that EPUBs are way more environmentally friendly than, than print books, but that's just not the case when you look at, like, the, 
the cooling station for because every sort of electronic thing does have its own um, footprint and you know I'm not gonna digress into into climate change and and my take on that I just don't really think that that EPUB has that much of a smaller footprint than if it has a smaller footprint at all than than publishing books at least when we did our research we found that some EPUBs actually have a bigger footprint than doing a print book so that's my my ramble and advice on that and thank you so much all of our beautiful Cinnabar Moths for tuning in and of course you don't have to be a Cinnabar Moth you can be any kind of moth you want to be or even a butterfly but I'm not, not Mariah Carey I'm not trying to bite her rhyme have a great week and talk to you soon bye